my name is Rebecca Rife. I'm really glad that you're joining me today. Today I'm going to share a little bit about um, suffering with hope. A message of suffering with hope. And uh, it's something that I'm familiar with. It's something that the Lord is teaching me. I would not say that I am there, there yet. I'm not. But I'm working with the Lord. I'm working with Him um, on a constant basis to get to the goal and that is the goal of not letting my arms grow limp but and not to grow weary in well-doing but do so in the midst of suffering and overcome evil with good overcome the trials the tribulations the um, persecution the suffering through hope and doing good in the midst of it knowing that God is working something out and that is not an easy thing it's very easy to get caught up in discouragement to become very bitter and allow our bitterness to keep us stuck you know it's one thing to have bitterness and know that it's there and working with the Lord to be sanctified beyond that so that there's a strength within you that no one can take away no one can take away the strength that you develop through suffering no one god will develop strength in you and morals ethics abilities tools i'm trying to think of another word that i'm uh in the back of my mind don't you hate that when that happens there's a thought right there and you just know it's there there's a word and it's there <laughs> I'll blame it on age so there are things that you grow within you and develop within you that uh, no one can take away strengths and abilities to overcome when God takes you through something especially if it's a very hard struggle and something you have fought to get through and really had to learn that it isn't your strength that's going to get you there but learning how to rely and lean on the Holy Spirit that's going to actually get you there and that within itself is a process learning to walk in the Spirit and not struggle so much with your inner man but to hand that over to God and say I can't do this I'm just gonna have to let it go and know that okay that's where I'm at and acknowledge that's where I'm at my heart is bitter and now I need to get beyond bitter so how do I do that well be a doer of the word that's how you do it you feel the Holy Spirit convict your heart you hear him talking to you that you're staying stuck and you're allowing your bitterness to just control you and you instead of growing hard-hearted and shutting him out you make yourself because it's an action that you literally it's a verb of action that you submit to it and the submission means to do it even when you don't want to it's to follow through with the steps that you hear the Spirit telling you to do even though everything within you is fighting not to do it you take the necessary steps to do it anyway and in doing that you develop a skill set you develop a strength you you develop being an overcomer and you grow in that and no longer have that within you but instead you have the very opposite you have submission you have obedience you have hum humility you you fruit of the spirit that that's what it is you grow the fruit of the spirit and no one can take that away from you no matter how hard somebody can come against you you have already developed that within you and you now are able to when the attack comes overcome it 
And the more you do it, the easier it is to overcome. The problem is when you very first start, the first time's always the hardest. Getting past that, it becomes easier and easier. So when you first begin to get past something you're stuck in is when it's the hardest to do. And that is when it's most important to respond to the Holy Spirit, regardless of how you feel, regardless of the suffering and the pain and the frustration and the hurt and the anger and the bitterness, regardless of all of that, that you walk the word and then the fruit develops as you walk it out and you walk it out in faith that God is going to heal that. And so I want to read something that I personally can very much relate to Jeremiah. I have absolutely felt like this before. I know exactly what he's saying and I've been there. And so when I read it, I felt like Jeremiah was singing my song. He was singing my heart. I was there. God had taken me through some things. You know, have you ever feel, felt like God disappointed you? And you hear other Christians saying the, the hurrah of he never lets us down. But you've been through suffering and you've been through hardship and you've been through loss and you've been through grief and you have come to a place where you do feel let down. Let me tell you, Jeremiah felt that too. And in that, Jeremiah grew an ability and a strength and a fruit to move past. And he gives us a key, a key of what it was within him that was the key element to help him. So I'm going to read in Lamentations. I'm in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 16. And I'm going to read on down. And so I will start out. He has made me chew on gravel. He has rolled me in the dust. Peace has been stripped away, and I have forgotten what prosperity is. I cry out. My splendor is gone. Everything I had hoped for from the Lord is lost. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I dare to hope. Let me read that again. Yet I dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. I say to myself, the key element. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And it is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of discipline. So I'm stopping right there at verse 27. I say to myself, you know, when we're in that place of feeling we're never going to forget the awful place that we're in. I'll never forget this time. I'll always remember this. I've had loss. I feel let down. I feel disappointed. I'm bitter. I'm hurt. I'm angry. I'm upset. So many of us can relate to that where Jeremiah is and we can read that and know that 
there's true anguish inside of us and we are at a place in life where we are brought low very low however we can take such comfort and we can find such instruction in what Jeremiah says take courage and take hope in the midst of our anguish take hope in it yet I dare to have hope when I remember this the faithful love of the Lord never ends his mercies never cease Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. To find ourselves in that anguished spot and begin to speak bitter words to ourselves, to hear ourselves speaking out death upon ourselves and hate upon others, bitterness within our hearts, and we stir ourselves within us with the words of our mouth discouragement well, brothers and sisters I encourage us all myself included to stir ourselves in the Lord and stir within us words of life and say to ourselves that the faithful love of the Lord never ends that his mercies are new every morning that we can dare to have hope. We can know that the Lord is good to those who depend on him. And it's good to wait upon the Lord in our suffering. It's good to sit alone, quietly waiting on the Lord's salvation. God is working something out in me. No one will ever be able to take away the strength and the fruit that I grow from this. God will come back again and save me. I'm in a place of anguish, but God, but God, I can dare to have hope in him because he's the God of all hope and he will turn all things around for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose and suffering with the Lord. Know this, that if I do, I will see his glorious presence on the day of his return because he has prepared my heart so that I may sit at a table and he will prepare a dinner for me and I will sit in the presence of the saints because God has made me sit alone in my suffering and brought me low and I felt disappointed and anguished but God brought me through and there was a joy and a hope that came out of it and a strength and a developed tool that I can always use for the rest of my life and a skill set that I can gain. And I will grow in this and I will, just like my Savior, develop obedience through my suffering. And I will do just as Jeremiah did. And I will submit to the Lord. And I will say to myself, I will pull out my sword. I will speak forth the word of God. And with my sword of the spirit, I will wield it within. And I will stir myself up and say, no, but God, I am in anguish. I feel like I'm chewing on gravel. And I have sit and rolled in the dust. And I have been stripped away. And I've forgotten what pr pr prosperity is. And I'm at a place of anguish and despair. And my suffering and my homelessness is bitter beyond words. But, God, and I will say to myself, words of life. I'm in a place of bitter beyond words. And when we're there, we speak those words. We hear ourselves say. And we know where we're at. And the more we speak it, the worse it gets. But let's stop and walk out the word and speak that which is not as if it were and it will be we will 
wield our sword and stir ourselves. Because remember, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not put out. If you're bruised and broken, he's not going to break you. You're just bruised and broken, but he's not going to break you. Do you feel broken inside and bruised up? God will not break you to the point that you cannot be repaired. He will not bring you to that spot. Do you feel like you're just a smoldering wick and your fire for the Lord is gone? That you were once, you can remember it, that you were on fire for the Lord and now you've gone through stuff and you're disappointed and you're anguished and angry and suffering and bitter. But God will not put it out because you're just smoldering. Fan the flames within you. And I know in that spot, that's the last thing we want to do. That's the last thing. But let go and let God wield your sword and walk the word and let God do the rest. Because he will also fan those flames and he will come through and we will yet again dare to have hope because when we get through it, on the other side, when we're going across the lake and the storm has come and we're bitter crossing to the other side, we will get to the seashore and we will know joy again. We will have victory again. So don't give up and let your arms grow limp. Don't give up and be weary in well-doing, but overcome evil with good and walk out the word and do something good for somebody and stir yourself in the Lord and do what God is calling you to do and be responsive to the Holy Spirit and submit to God whether we feel like it or not. Walk it out. And remember that we can dare to have hope. He's the God of all hope. And he is the God of victory. He is our redeemer. He is our rescuer. He is our great physician. He is our healer. He is our savior. He is the almighty. He is the almighty warrior. He is our provider, our comforter, our strengthener. He stands by waiting for us. He's always there. He is our help in our very present time of need. When we are in a present moment of absolute need, he's our helper. He's our counselor. He's our guider. Our job is to respond. He will nudge us, speak to us, convict us, strengthen us, help us, but we have a part to play to actually put our tennis shoes to the road and step it out. Let the rubber of our shoes hit the road and walk it out. That's our responsibility. And the moment we do submit to God and do it even when we don't want to, we are beginning to move past it. Don't stay stuck when we know that's not where we really want to be. And don't expect the Lord to do every little thing. But remember that we are in fellowship in our sufferings, cooperating with God in order to move forward. And that, dear brothers and sisters, where it's really at, that is where it's really at is to actually be walking it out with the Lord in total submission, daring to have hope in the middle of our sufferings. That is a testimony in action. And it is a beautiful thing. 
I know it's difficult, but it's not, but it's doable. It is not so difficult that we cannot do it. It is something that we can do. And it is, in fact, something we are called to do. And so don't grow weary. Don't get discouraged. Don't lose hope. But take courage. Pick up your bed and walk. Move forward with the Lord. Know that so many of his saints have felt that place. And he has walked them past it. And he will walk us too. He will take us by the hand. Our job is to put our fit, foot forward and take the step. And we will get there. And with that, I hope you're very blessed. I hope you have a wonderful day. I love you all. I'll see you again next time. All right. Bye-bye.